OK, so we're going to explore some properties of trees in graph theory. We're going to be interested in the relationship between the number of vertices of our tree, the number of paths of a certain length, and also the diameter of our tree. So very quickly, some of the terminology. A tree is a graph which is connected and doesn't contain any cycles. So here you can't go from one vertex back to itself along a different edge each time without going back on yourself. And we're interested in the number of paths of a certain length. So here a path is just a sequence of edges which are all connected to each other. So this entire tree here would count as a path of length 6 because it contains 6 edges, whereas in this tree there's lots of paths of length 2. And finally the diameter of a tree is just the length of the largest path within that tree. So our first example at the top has diameter 2, the longest path is length 2, whereas here the diameter is 6 because there's a path of length 6. The problem we're going to solve is trying to find which trees have more paths of length k than this linear graph here. So the first thing that we need to do is actually just calculate what is pk, the number of paths of length k for a linear graph. So just to start with a simple example, let's imagine we had n was 5 and we're interested in the number of paths of length 2. Well, it's quite easy to see that you can count them all, just here's your first one, then we can move along our starting point 1, then we move along one more, and then we've covered all paths of length 2 here. So you could say that your number of paths of length 2 would be 3 for this example. And this can be generalised. Let's imagine we've now got n vertices in a line like this graph here. We go all the way up to n, and here k needs to be less than n in order for there to be a path of length k. So our first path of length k actually includes the vertices 1 up to vertex k plus 1. So for k plus 1 vertices, there are k edges. So here the length of our path is k. So we can enumerate these now. So we go from 1 to k plus 1 gives us our first path of length k, then from 2 to k plus 2 gives us our second one, and so on all the way up to we go from n minus k to k plus n minus k, where k plus n minus k is our final vertex n there. So you can see that our linear tree here with n vertices has exactly n minus k paths of length k. So the problem we're going to try and solve now is as some sort of function of the number of vertices and the diameter of our tree, when is the number of paths of length k, pk, greater than or equal to n minus k? So when will our tree actually contain more paths of length k than the linear graph does. So for example here we have more paths of length 2 than the linear graph but we don't have as many paths of length 3, 4, 5 or 6. In fact there aren't any there. So we'll have a go at exploring this problem and try and find in terms of the diameter, number of vertices and k a formula which will help us answer this question. So first we'll look at some examples just to build some intuition for this problem. We've got some different examples of trees all where n is 6. So we'll have a look at the value of pk for different values of k here. We've got this one is in the straight line configuration. Here we've imagined perhaps moving one of the vertices and joined it towards the end, and here we've joined a vertex towards the middle of a long path of edges there. So if we start with p2 for this example, the number of paths of length 2, you've got 1, 2, 3 as part of this main path, plus another 2 paths of length 2 using this vertex at the bottom. So p2 is 5, which is actually bigger than n minus k, which would be 6 minus 2, or 4. Let's have a look at p3 then, the number of paths of length 3. You've got 2 as part of this main path, and there's also another one using this vertex at the bottom. So p3 is 3, which is actually equal to our n minus k, or 6 minus 3. So this still works. And finally, p4, we get just the 1 in the top row there, but then we also include this vertex. We get 1, 2, 3, 4 edges, so there is a second path of length 4 there, so p4 is 2, which still just about works. p5 would actually be 0 here, there's no path of length 5, so unfortunately here p5 would not work, so we'll just cross this one out. So moving on to this example now, p2 once again will be 5, you've got 1, 2, 3 as part of your main line at the top there, plus another 2 paths of length 2 using our vertex at the bottom. For p3 we actually get 4 now, because there are 2 as part of this main path here, but then there's also another two paths of length 3 which use this vertex at the bottom, so we get more paths of length 3 now. 
And if we look at P4, there's the one path of length 4 which uses all of this path at the top. But then unfortunately here we can't use this vertex at the bottom to construct a path of length 4. So unfortunately here P4 would actually be less than n minus k, or less than 6 minus 4, so this wouldn't work for us. So the important thing to take away here is perhaps there's some sort of problem with if we join a vertex towards the centre of a long path rather than joining it towards the edge. At some sort of intuitive level we can see that this limits the length of our paths that we can construct with this vertex. So we don't want to impose restrictions on exactly where we can place vertices. We're looking for some sort of relationship between n, k, and d. So unfortunately here we will have to consider this worst case scenario. So now we'll explore this in a bit more detail. So having gained some intuition about the problem, we're now ready to look at a way of constructing a certain number of paths of length k. So let's imagine first of all we've got the diameter is d, so this tells us that there must be at least one path of length d. Then working just like before, where within a single path of length n minus 1 with n vertices, and here you've got d plus 1 vertices, we'll just have, using the argument from earlier, d plus 1 minus k paths of length k within the long path of length d. So here you would have, let's say k was 2, you've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, just moving all of your paths of length k along. So we get d plus 1 here because d plus 1 is actually the number of vertices. So this is how many paths of length k we just get for free from having the diameter is d. And the idea is to now use these remaining vertices to construct some more paths of length k. So how many of these remaining vertices are there? Well, we've got d plus 1 vertices in our path of length d, so all that's left is n minus d plus 1 vertices. So the idea now is to actually construct a unique path for each of these vertices, which has length k. And then when we add together our total number, you'll have n minus d plus 1 plus d plus 1 minus k. This will give us n minus k, so the d plus 1 terms cancel there. So this would actually give us n minus k paths of length k. So the thing to do now is to explore for exactly which values of d can we construct a path uniquely for each of these different vertices which don't lie on our path of length d. So the construction we're going to use is actually very simple. We'll start with a vertex that doesn't lie on our long path of length d, and we travel inwards to our long path, then continue going along that path until we've generated a path of length k. So you can see quite easily that this is going to give you distinct paths for each distinct vertex. So you have a distinct endpoint, and the other endpoint is going to be on your path of length d, so there's not going to be a situation where perhaps we go from here and come out and we end up double counting the same path there. So we'll get for each vertex a unique path. The only problem is potentially with one in the middle here, we might just run out of path here in the middle. So if d isn't quite large enough, or if our k is too big, we might not be able to construct a path of length k in this way. So we'll return to our worst case scenario analysis. So first of all, let's just look at the case where d is even. Then the worst case scenario is that we join in the middle, but Within that, this vertex here actually has an extra two edges, whereas the one that only joins with a single edge only has one extra edge in its path in this construction. So this is our worst case possible scenario, would be this edge here where we only get one extra vertex, and then we have d over 2 extra edges there. So we'd have d over 2 plus 1, this would need to be greater than or equal to k. So we can rearrange this to tell us that d has got to be greater than or equal to 2k minus 2 in the case where d is even. If we look at the case where d is odd, we get a slightly different bound because now instead of taking just d over 2, you can actually have d plus 1 over 2. So you get still, you would get three extra edges here rather than having two and a half, so you would round up. So you'd have d plus 1 over 2 edges plus this extra edge here would need to be greater than or equal to k in order for our construction to still work. So this rearranges to give d is greater than or equal to 2k now minus 3 when d is odd. What's interesting about this setup here is that when d is even, d greater than or equal to 2k minus 2, given that d is even, this holds if and only if d is greater than or equal to 2k minus 3, because the next lowest even number would be 2k 
minus 4. So we can actually conclude then in both cases we need d greater than or equal to 2k minus 3 for this particular construction to work. But this is specific to our construction, so we don't actually know if this bound is optimal or if it's possible to lower the value of d and still get, using a different construction, n minus k paths of length k. So we'll have a go at reducing the value of d to 2k minus 4, and what we'll actually be able to do now is construct a counterexample where there aren't n minus k paths of length k, just working in general. So we'll use, let's imagine we've got our path of length d, which is 2k minus 4, so d is even here. So we can split this up into d over 2 and d over 2 edges either side of the centre, and we just use for our worst case scenario as before, add in a single vertex down here which is connected, but it turns out isn't going to be connected with enough edges to construct a path of length k. So first of all, for this vertex down here, what is the longest path length that it's involved in? It'll be involved in the path of length 1 plus d over 2. And here d is 2k minus 4, so this is 1 plus k minus 2, or just k minus 1. So this vertex is no use to us. It's not involved in any paths of length k, so we can rule this one out. And then all we're left with is having a straight line of exactly d edges, so d plus 1 vertices. And we need to calculate exactly how many paths of length k there are here. So we can use the same argument as before. We've got d plus 1 vertices, but if we express this in terms of k, d is 2k minus 4. So d plus 1 is going to be 2k minus 3 vertices in our long path of length d here. So then if we want to calculate how many paths of length k there are, our first one, labelling these with integers now from 1 to 2k minus 3, our first path of length k goes from 1 to k plus 1, our next one goes from 2 to k plus 2, and so on, and our final one will go from k minus 3 to k plus k minus 3. So you can see then in this scenario we have pk is equal to k minus 3. There are exactly k minus 3 paths of length k in this example. So now the real question is, what is the value of n minus k? So here n is the total number of vertices. So that will be our d plus 1 plus this extra vertex. So n minus k will actually be d plus 2 minus k. But then we also know the value of d. We know d is 2k minus 4. So you've got 2k minus 4 plus 2 minus k, and this will simplify to give us k minus 2, which is actually greater than our value of pk. So we can conclude in this example, we've constructed an example of a tree where pk is actually less than n minus k. And this will work for any values of dk, as long as d is equal to 2k minus 4, and independent of the value of n as well. So this is the case where d is even, but you could also use the same argument where d is odd, reduce the value of d even further to 2k minus 5, and it's quite simple to come up with a similar example using this worst case scenario. So we can conclude then that our bound d greater than or equal to 2k minus 3 is optimal, and this is what we need then in order to have pk greater than or equal to n minus k, or for our tree to have at least as many paths of length k as the straight line configuration tree does.